Dude, so uh, we're recording on there. Do you are, are you able to pull up those uh, pictures? Recording on, on there. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Cool. You just tell me, like right here. Where do you want to start? Where do you want to start? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Types of lilies. Get rid of you, you stupid ad. So are you going to give a shout out for these yahoos? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Okay. Yeah, it's up to you. So I'm B Flane. And I am B Radical. And we are the Horticult. Thanks for coming along for the ride. On this episode of the podcast, we're reviewing a blog post from Savvy Gardener like we love to do. Cultivating curiosity and confidence, might I say. Oh, very well, sir. Very well. <laughs> So we're going to go over eight types of lilies and Brad might throw in a couple more. Yeah. So that's the name of this article. So if you want to find this article, you can go to savvygardener.com and in their, I think it's their ornamentals section, you can find this article mm -hmm. and we'll share it at the end of the podcast so you can, you can tap into it. So, so lilies real quick. I mean, lilies... Uh, are in the Liliaceae family. Not too hard to remember that, but uh, <laughs> uh, why why would people be so interested in lilies who are not familiar with them already? I mean, obviously, if you know about lilies, you are uh, drawn and gravitate towards them because of their massive amount of color, okay? Yeah. Um, but... Why would you buy a lily? Like what? Oh, they're they're my wife's favorite plant. Yeah. Um. They they're regal. They're they're really cool. I I like daylilies, which is in a different class. Sure. Uh, because they're more water wise and they're perennial, but these guys are too. Yeah. Uh, they're they're Some perennial. They're are, perennial. Yeah. But they, I on the water wise scale, I would have to say. These are more water wise. No, or less, no, less I would say less. Yeah, they're um, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, lilies, um, not, and not just this article, which we'll kind of just cruise through that, but also I grow these in the greenhouse, and so I'm uh, you're attached. quite familiar with <laughs> <laughs> the struggles and the intricacies of of how to grow these from from bulb and. And, uh, it, it gets a little bit interesting, I got to admit, but okay. So we're going to go through this, uh, this article, uh, and the first type of lily is Asiatic lily. Okay. Is that it right there? Yeah. That's that, that guy that's right this there. Picture. Yeah. And, uh, usually the colors, usually the colors are solid. Uh, once in a while you get a little bit of uh, speckling in there. So some two tone colors, um, and interestingly enough about Asiatic lilies are they're not fragrant. So, so if you're visiting somebody else's garden and you're like, oh, I know that's a lily, or at least I think it is. Is that Asiatic or is that Oriental or what is that exactly? Yeah. Uh, go smell it. Oh, you know, just make sure there's not a bee or a wasp or something in, in their uh, collecting pollen. But Interesting. Yeah, so go smell it, and maybe you can uh, help identify, you know, impress your your friends. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so Asiatics, they they don't there there's no fragrance to them. And, so is this um, a Asiatic too, or this is the ornamental? No, that's a, that's an Oriental. Oriental. Did you want to? Are you done with Asiatic? Not not yet. I, there's just a couple things. Okay, so they're they're not fragrant. Uh, they typically have a smaller inflorescence or just petals flower. It's a little bit smaller. Uh, in general, and then they are a favorite of deer and rabbit. So if you're trying to feed your uh, your forest critters, plant Asiatic lilies. Okay. <laughs> uh, they are a little bit shorter too. You don't have to stake them to, usually, which is kind of nice in the in the whole uh, spectrum of lilies. Um, anyway, so then moving forward from Asiatics, then you jump into Oriental lilies, and these guys are amazing um the differences between these and asiatics orientals are fragrant uh very fragrant in fact and usually it's in the evening that you get that really strong uh delicious fragrance are um, they hard to tell 
the difference other than the fragrancy? Like they look very similar. Okay. So they look similar in the way that the Lily, um, has the six petals and the, and the, um, all the flower parts are, are protruding <laughs> the stamen and, yeah, yeah. and pistol and everything, uh, the same way. And, and in my mind, when same I was a high, kid, no, everything, no. no, oriental lilies are much, much taller and usually need staking. Okay. Uh, they can grow for, uh, between two and five feet tall. And, uh, so highly fragrant, two to five feet tall. They usually have these speckles, like freckles on their petals, just these, just be- like, beautiful dainty little dots on the on the petals that's another way and they do kind of pendulate just a little bit more than your asiatics so they like lean just a tiny bit more yeah depending on the the hybrid okay so uh oh man super important with the, uh with oriental lilies versus a- asiatic they yeah. are deer and rabbit resistant cool so if you have little you know issues with that you know which one to plant right on rock on Okay, so moving forward, uh, then there's the trumpet lily. This is one that I have not. Trumpet lily is one that I have very little experience with. Um, but after looking at the um, the article and just kind of checking out the the picture, let's see. I think you need to go up on that photo. Oh, which one? Yeah, for the the trumpet, the trumpetta. So, what is this one? Uh, this one is, I, th- I believe the next one down. Oh no. It says trumpet. Oh yeah. Yeah. Trumpet. Okay. Very interesting. So, cause this one is the Oriental. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Roll, roll it on down. There it is. Okay. Beautiful. So trumpet lily is, uh, um, an interesting guy. Uh, it's a lot like the Oriental lily. It is fragrant and well, does it say it's yeah, Oriental? Scroll, yeah. Scroll down. Yeah. I think a, that's Oriental a scotch. One. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So this is like this, this guy, this trumpet lily is like an oriental lily. It's fragrant, right? But it's like an oriental, oriental lily on crack. <laughs> it, it has many, many more flowers on it. Uh, 12 to 24 blooms on it. Uh, and this picture is just phenomenal. Anyway, you can see kind of how those flowers pendulate down more. Yeah. Um, and this one, absolutely, I'd stake this thing. I mean, think of like the weight of the the head of that, the top of that thing is freaking nuts. You get a little bit of a wind and that thing would just like snap, snap right off of the, the, the soil line. Um, it almost looks like there's, in this picture, it looks like there's a vine attached to it too. What is that? Yeah, could be, yeah. Some kind of ivy. That's really cool. Clematis or something cruising up. Maybe yeah. morning glory. I've seen that happen. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> probably morning glory. Yeah. Anyway, it's super cool. Uh, then you move on down to Orient, Orient pet lily, and that's basically an Oriental. And a, it's a little fancier. It's an or, it's an Oriental and a trumpet lily, crossed. Hybrid? Yes. So you don't. I mean, I mean, they're both great, right? So how do you do that? Like how how do you? They, they cross those two. So so they rub them and rub them, isolate them. Gather the seed, boom. You've Is that the, the only way to be able to cross them, or can you clone it? Because you need the bulb, right? Yeah, but but uh, you grow the plant, yeah, and the bulb forms and it under divides. the soil, Does and then divide? you can take that bulb. You could take that and clone it. Yeah, take the little eyes out of it and clone it. Um, honestly, I don't know how they propagate that little bad boy. Other than maybe a little like because that that uh, yeah how do they figure out the varieties how they keep the varieties looking yeah that's they'd have to clone it they'd have to clone it to to get to get the genetics right to stay the same yeah for sure huh. so they cross that one so that's an Orion pet uh, and, and that's anyway it's very similar to Oriental and, and uh, trumpet cruise on down to the L A hybrid that's what they call it L A hybrid lily this is a, again one that I'm not familiar with. But it's very, very similar to the Asiatic. Um, it's really pretty. Yeah, it's very similar to the Asiatic. The difference is, is like, okay, I want to. Should I buy Asiatic or should I buy the, this LA Hybrid? Um, Sexier, more colorful, and <laughs> boom, that's <laughs> Asiatic. It. That's hilarious. More eye popping than yeah. than Asiatic. It's, it's easier to grow, so it's oh, that's good too. 
Yeah, I mean, if you want, if you want something to really pop, in your the yard, Asiatic was the non-smelling, deer-loving kind. Exactly, and and I believe this is right in that category. So, uh, cost-wise, want to keep going on similar. that one? Let's let's scroll on down. Cost-wise, is it similar or it's, it's going to be you know, more expensive? Uh, between Asiatics and Orientals. You're going to, you're going to pay more for an oriental for sure. Uh, right, let's see. Go. Okay. Turks cap lilies. Uh, this one right here is, see, this is interesting because uh, 25 years ago in my mind, this was an oriental lily, uh, but clearly it's been categorized as something different. <laughs> and um, so that Turks cap lily. You need to look at it. Yeah, it, 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 you can see it's it, so it's flowers, uh, it's petals, it's inflorescence curls back, and really exposes that uh, the, the pistil and stamen. Uh, yeah, that's quite like almost like spider, yeah. like spider legs kind of curling back. But that's very um, interesting. Yeah, it's one I'm not. I mean, it's I'm not super familiar with no, that one. Not super familiar, but I believe it is a, a, a shoot off of. Um, the oriental and then number seven can canada lilies have you heard of this one mm -mm. yeah me neither canadian <laughs> <laughs> um beautiful though i mean look at that it looks like a leopard lily yeah, let me share uh super duper freckles all over it um and in fact in fact i believe i think that's the common them. name is tiger lily oh okay I think that um, would be something that a lot of people would know. Technically, it's Canada lily. Right. Canadian well, lily. so Savvy Gardener is in Canada. So maybe they're just being. Oh, well, uh, maybe. You know. and, well, and, and that very well may be a native species up there. <laughs> so that's really cool. Yeah. Thanks, Savvy Gardener. Uh, Do you know this one? This is one I don't, I'm not familiar with as well. It's also known as the Easter lily. So the Longiflorum lily. Long of Florum is technical. Easter lily. And everybody sees the Easter lily. It's that big white lily that, um, yeah, I mean, you can't grow them as perennial here in Utah, right? Right. So it's going to be more of an annual type uh, thing. Well, it says it, it, it's hardy plant survives winter temperatures as low as 20 degrees. So it should be. It should be fine. I've never, I have actually never, ever seen them here in the Intermountain uh, region. As a perennial, huh. so there must be another uh, a facet to that besides yeah. the cold. Yeah, buying lilies for planting. Okay, so yeah, lilies. As far as like buying lilies for planting, um, how I would do it as a homeowner, I would I would plant the bulb in the ground, uh, either late fall or early or, or in spring in the springtime. Um, knowing that it's perennial, you know, the Orientals and the Asiatics and potentially the hybrids thereof. But uh, they seem like they're relatively easy to grow. I've never, are. I've never grown this kind of variety of, uh, like I told you, I do the daylilies. Yeah. It's like Homer, please. Or something. Oh, oh, Homer Callus. Yeah. 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 yeah, Homer, yeah. Callus. Homer Callus. Um, <laughs> Homer, please. Kid, so for these. One thing I would recommend doing though, uh, to your lilies that I, I think a lot of people kind of forget about. I certainly am not on top of this myself, but that is um, supplying it with fertilizer every year and trying to recharge that, that, that bulb, that tuber uh, with like bone meal mm. and um, any fertilizer works, but bone meal in particular. So why bone meal? So it, it's more of a phosphorus based, um, fertilizer and uh just to help with the uh that that helps with the rooting and blooming of things but uh and because these guys have flowers that are just gigantic they need a lot of it yeah i mean and that kind of goes for like tulips and daffodils and things like that if you want the if you want the flower integrity to stay large year after year after year you really need to put the throw uh have some input to that to that bulb you need to feed it and um 
Would anywhere. you say that's the, uh, true with all bulbs? Like with your daffodils and tulips too, you should you should probably charge them with bone meal. Yeah, yeah. And you remember it, Miranda? We used. I mean, that we used to do that. Well, we we did. Uh, I don't think we. I didn't do. I wasn't there with bone meal. We did other stuff. We we laid down phosphorus and potassium and yeah. Sulf, sulfur. Didn't we have like sulfur? We did, pellets? yeah, sulfur pellets to kind of help reduce the, the pH a little bit. And, and gypsum. Uh huh. We did all those, but I don't remember doing bone meal. Like I think as we went on with Marinda, their budget was getting cut, and I think we just stopped <laughs> doing some things. And I wasn't there for the bone meal stuff. Yeah. Anyway, it's it's one thing that it's just an extra step. But um, you know, I mean, if you if you have the time, if you have the energy and the resources and whatnot. Uh, definitely feed your, feed your little dudes. Okay. So there's a, there's a photo of a, of one of the, the bulbs out right there. Yeah. So this looks like it's been in the ground and they dug it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me, uh, a little disc on the bottom from where the roots grow. Um, a couple other lilies that came to mind as, as we were checking this out. Uh, and, and it may be similar to the Hemerocallus, um, the daylily, in the way that they're not technically true lilies. Although, I'm just going to throw them out here. So we've got the hosta lily. Oh, that counts as a, as a lily. Yeah, it's a lily, full on. Cool. It's not maybe part of this traditional uh, group and hybrid of lilies that we're talking about here today. But hostas, so and a lot of people grow those for the leaf, right? Right. Because the flower is the inflorescence is quite small, uh, still beautiful, but not really grand, grandos, grandote. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, calla lily, the calla lily. So, and I brought the, I bring this up because this is one that we grow in the greenhouse, and it is uh, this beautiful. Just the the coloring is beautiful, how it unfurls, and it's like a, a cup vase shape uh, flower. And, um, yeah, the inter intricacies of growing that on is, is very difficult, uh, to get the watering just right. It's more of an inside plant, isn't it? Uh, calla lily. Yeah. It, it's not more of an inside plant, but you can use it as an inside plant plant. I think you might be thinking of maybe the, uh, the spathophyllum, the, the, is that the peace lily? The spathophyllum, oh. that white one with the yeah, the it's really broad kind of leaves and uh, yeah, yeah. No, the the callas. I think it was yeah. This they use them for the funerals. Yes, yes, they Very, do. I've never seen them in a landscape. Well, here we go. We planted those at Marinda, right there in the courtyard one year, because it kind of is a tropicalish kind of gives you that tropical feel. And they, I was a little bit nervous because I'm like, oh man, that's, that's got to be a shade plant. You know, you got to be careful. You got to, you got to baby it. Once it's in the landscape though, full sun, full West exposure. And that thing just killed it. It did. They did so well. Huh. They grew so well. I couldn't believe it. So anyway, they are, they would be an, an annual. They don't come back. But if you wanted to use that in a really like special place in the landscape, um, with your elephant ear and whatever, yeah, you know, just to give you that kind of cool tropical look. Anyway, uh, calla lilies, good one. Another one, canna lily. Yep. We, and you remember those yeah. digging, digging those bad boys up where the, yeah, we at tried, the end of the we year, tried those to save them. trunk. Yeah. Massive trees. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so lilies in general, at least not my experience in the landscape, but then also um, in the greenhouse, for the most part, lilies in general, they want water. They, they, they want a lot of water. Um, the majority, like 99% of the flower is just a big chunk of water behind a few cells, right? Um, but by saying that, you have to be so careful. The water management is so critical in like an enclosed environment, like a greenhouse um, to where you don't want to overwater and then rot out that bulb. Right. Right. So good, sharp drainage water management is critical in the beginning. Once you get it out in the landscape um, it's a completely different beast. 
and in fact, canna lilies, um, I've used those in my pond before as uh, aquatic. Whoa. So that's cool. There, there's, they, they can transition into that, which is pretty rad. Anyway. Sweet. Yeah. Well, right on. I'm, uh, we're not doing this live, so we don't have any questions, but, um, do you have any, you're good. Yeah. I'm sure there's more. There's a ton more. I'm sure. Like, well, those are, that's a really good uh, taste tester as far as like the Lily group. I, I need to explore a little bit into the, the Lily group, I think, because, okay. uh, it's how expensive are the calla lilies? Cause that would be really cool as like a, I mean, we, we kind of just, uh, we talked about annuals being in pots. Uh-huh. We I mean, could totally hook that thing up in a pot. Totally. Yeah. Um, seven, eight, nine bucks. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just right around for what you get for I'm just trying to think how much are like regular annual flats. I mean, it's could be like 15 bucks for a flat or something. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't last. So, yeah. Well, and then the other thing is too. So when you're thinking annual, well, okay. So you've got your perennial lilies, oriental, Asiatic, uh, hosta, hosta. Those are perennial lilies. They flower for a short time, three, three weeks, right? Three, four weeks, maybe at best. The calla lily, that sucker goes all summer long. Okay. All the way until frost. So same thing with the cannas. Uh, let's see. Cannas. Oh, I guess they kind of, it'll die and they'll put another one out. They'll put another one out. And if you deadhead it, it'll, spur that on that's right it will continue to then throw up more more flowers okay uh if you don't deadhead it i think it will f- uh fade out and fizzle out and it'll be like no nope, i'm 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 creating my seed now <laughs> uh so if you keep cutting that uh that reproductive st- uh stem out then it will so throw up more here's my i'm, I'm thinking about if i don't deadhead my daffodils if I don't deadhead my lilies, uh, those are going to make seed heads. They're going to go down and they're going to try to produce. Does it make a big old thing like the seeds? Uh, they can. Yeah. See that? Means- some are viable, some are not. Oh, okay. Some are, are sterile. So they might the need some. Some friends. Yeah, some friends around. Interesting. Yeah. So that's where they get the like a bulb that's where the bulb forms is on the top. No, that's, that's going to be an underground portion. So it's kind of like, you know, with cannas and they, or, or irises, they, they create those tubers. Yeah. Well, an iris didn't come from a tuber. It's <laughs> right. like the egg, the egg and the chicken, like who came first, you know, the chicken or the egg. So there's a seed that forms a tuber. There's a seed that forms a plant. At the end of the year, that plant has created a tuber under the soil it's storing its sugars and starches to survive the next year. But then you can go in there and take cuttings or chunks off of that tuber. Right. And now you have the genetics of that same plant and you can create more, you can propagate more from that one chunk of tuber and, or which started a, from a seed. Yeah. Now, now a bulb, you, you really don't want to chop up the bulb, Right. Right, but you can't the, divide it, but it makes little bulbs. Little baby bulbs. It makes little baby bulbs. <laughs> it makes little baby bulbs. Yeah. <laughs> That's so weird. Little bulblets. Yeah. So, and uh, those are the propagules, and you can just use those, and you can create more. And um, yeah, that's going to be a, a good horticulture lesson for for your kids someday. One day. Yeah. So maybe I won't deadhead my daffodils and I want to see what happens. Or if I don't, like when they die, it's, they're put, using the energy from the, the bulb to make the seeds. So will they not bloom as well next year if I let them well, so, go so to seed? What, so what you want to do, once you're, you're talking about daffodils, right? Yeah, well, we could talk about it. So yeah, daffodils. Lilies too. I mean, it Yeah, to lilies. kind of on the lily spectrum, but with daffodils for sure, after it's done flowering, take out that flowering stock, leave the leaves, leave the leaves, 
to Until harness the sunlight. In. Yeah. And then it'll pack that I, bolt full but, of So that's starch. forming seeds at the end of that where the flower was, right? That's right. But they're probably not viable. That's right. And but it's using energy to make non viable seeds. That's correct. So you want to nip that puppy off. Nipper in the bud. Okay, but yeah. I wish they rebloomed. That would be, that'd be really cool. If daffodils. Oh yeah, we deadheaded would be, them. They rebloomed. That's the next big thing. Well, Some that's why I like. That's why about. I really like daylilies because mm-hmm. you could just whack them and they'll come back and rebloom and everything. Well, and you remember this was kind of something we would always like chuckle at a little bit, but that was that was Brent's job. Yeah. <laughs> the, oh wait, wait. Who was, he was the, the day lily deadheader? Who was the uh, was the the founders kid that would go out there and just do it all day? He would come in at like sure. after school or whatever, and he would just go. <laughs> I was like, I want that job. Yeah, but but here's the thing, though. <laughs> here's the thing. It made all the difference, right? It did. Those details made all the difference, and so if you get lackadaisical, if you kind of like uh, like oh, I'll, get, I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, your daylily may start to peter out and fade, and then you don't end up with that big, nice show of flowers constantly through the season. Yeah. So, and it's, I mean, the same thing with roses. You remember the rose, the rose deadheading uh, dude? I do. And uh, same thing. You stop deadheading the roses, and guess what happens? Yeah, I, I, so I, he, he might have been day, daylily guy. I was a rose guy. Oh, you were the rose guy. I was a rose guy. I just go out there and dead head roses. Those uh, the floor bundas. Yeah, white floor bunda roses all day. <laughs> the old bunda booze, Yeah. Every That's every crazy. three weeks, I'd go through and prune them out. And they just kept on floriferous, floriferous. Go, go. I wouldn't hard prune them. I was just deadheading. Sure, but it's just a lot of effort. Seeing those guys, those guys will people try to notice, and they said you're doing. You know, looks really good. Every. Kept keeping them from be browning out. Well, and if you wanted to go to a place that was fragrant, highly fragrant, that was the arbor. The rose arbor was the place to be. Yeah, and that was just a cool get like place. intoxicated with those. Like, <laughs> yeah, cool. All right, well, cool, Brad. All right, man. Take care. Thank you. Later. Bye.